Dr. Dimopoulos. By the way, do you use uh, injections of Adivegif by uh, diabetes proliferative retinopathy? Do, be, do you believe in this of course. old story of Arvin that if you inject, then we have no, no, I inject, immediately I inject, I inject Adivegif one, one day before the operation. Also by Just to, to create, yeah, to create uh, uh, less bleeding during the operation. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, I'd like to, uh, to thank Dr. Ferretis for his kind invitation today. And uh, the, um, uh, does it go which way? Okay. And uh, the opportunity for my talk today was this paper, which was published in Retina in May this year, regarding laser prophylactic treatment for fellow eyes in general retinal tears. And uh, the authors here uh, had two groups, the observation and the uh, photocoagulation group. And the, the results, uh, you can see that the incidence of retinal tears and giant retinal tears with macular on detachment in the observation group was lower, actually, than the photocoagulation group but it was uh, higher in giant retinal tears with macular off detachment. And the authors uh, reached the conclusion that prophylactic laser treatment in fellow eye decreased the incidence of giant retinal tears and limits the consequences of diagnosed tears. So that's a bit strange uh, uh, until you go deeper into the paper and you reach the conclusion and then you, s you see that what they actually mean is that uh, photo, um, photocoagulation of giant retinal tears decreases overall the number of giant retinal tears while maintains the same number of tears. And also that if you get a detachment from a giant, uh, for, for giant retinal tear, you get it in the periphery and not in the, in the center so you don't get a macular, on, uh, a macular off retinal detachment. And further down, they say that they didn't check for a peritoneal membrane, but they, 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 they advise caution that when you do laser, you could get an induction of PVD, retinal detachment, and a peritoneal membrane. So you can see that this is a field that is quite confusing. So we'd like to, to try to clear out, if I can, those are some predisposing factors for uh, retinal detachment. The counter is no carnage, so I can talk as much as I can. Male gender, vitreoretinopathies, myopia, lattice, uh, sky is retinal tears, a fake, a pseudophakia, laser, other surgeries, trauma, severe retinitis, acute retinal necrosis, and detachment in the fellow eye. So when do we do prophylactic laser? We do laser when we have a symptomatic tear with vitreous traction. Can we have a tear without vitreous traction? No, because traction creates the tear. So that, that's a tear that we should laser. Or when we find a dialysis, we could laser it so we don't get a dialysis detachment. If you have a tear or a hole with an operculum, do you do laser? Some people do, some don't. Especially should do if you have an anomalous persistent vitreous adhesion. If you have a symptomatic tears, uh, the, the literature is not clear about that. Some people do uh, laser, some don't, and those who don't have a long series of eyes that they didn't alter the rate of RD if they didn't do laser to those tears. Holy lattice, you don't generally need to, to, to do them. A fake pseudophakia, or just for family history of detachment, you don't need to laser those eyes. You don't need to laser eyes with myopic, uh, who, who, who are non-myopic, without detachment history and without uh, uh, retinal detachment in the fellow eye. You don't need to, to, uh, to, um, to laser uh, asymptomatic lattice, just degenerative retinoscisis, or, or just myopia. What happens with prophylactic laser in the fellow eye? If you have a fake eye with lattice, what do you do? You could do lattice if the other eye has, has, has had detachment surgery. You could do laser, but as long as it's not very extended. If it is going to be extended, it's better to do a 360 laser, not just 200 or, or, or less laser. And also depends whether there is a PVD or not. If there is a PVD, then there is a less chance to get a detachment. If there's no PVD, then uh, the, the chance is high, and then you should consider doing laser. Uh, but you should also consider that there is still a low chance of retinal detachment, that tears can still appear in normal retina, that there is a limited efficacy of the laser, and uh, today a uh, retinal detachment says you has a quite high success of over 80%. But having said that, you, there is always the high, um, um, the, there is always a, a, a possibility that you may have a failure of the first surgery. If the patient is not able to see the symptoms, if, if the patient came for the other eye with a total detachment that, that he hadn't realized he had a detachment, then it means that the second eye will do the same, so probably it's better to laser that eye. Or if they live in rural areas without access to ophthalmologists, or if they're not going to, uh, to come for regular checkups, then again, you should consider laser those eyes. If you have uh, fake eyes with retinal tufts, you, you don't need to do laser. If you have retinal, uh, uh, retinoscisis, you should consider laser if the, the other eye 
has had a, red, a sky city detachment, and if in your sky cities you have holes on the outer layer of the eye. If you have fake eyes with tests, usually people do laser, but there is conflicted data on the literature. If you have fake eyes uh, who have had uh, an operation of for a janitor in the other eye, the literature says it should do, but when I, um, I remember Bill Elwood and uh, Paul Sullivan in Mufis telling us about a case with a young uh, girl who came for a giant retinal tear and had a surgery which didn't go well, they lasered the other eye prophylactically, and the other eye uh, got on to develop a giant retinal tear detachment, was operated, it didn't go well, so they're not very keen to do that neither. It, the same thing happened to me as well. Stickler syndrome, yes, is one of the diseases that may have a prophylactic laser. Pseudophagic eyes with lattice, tufts, and skysis, no, you don't need to laser prophylactically. Pseudophagic eyes with tests, yes, because I have two presupposing factors, is pseudophagia and detachment in the other eye. But you should not use it as a prevention for, before cataract surgery. It doesn't mean that because there is a history of detachment, I do laser before the cataract to reduce the chance. Pseudophagic eyes with operated giant retina tears, yes, is the same as with the phagic eyes. What happens with the 360 pseudophagic uh, uh, laser? We, we can do 360 laser if when we do the detachment we can't find the break, or if uh, we find a break, but according to the link of law, that break is not causing the detachment. So we suspect that there's another break somewhere else that we can't find. We can do 360 laser if you have bad visibility, pore dilation, lens remnants, posterior capsule opacification, corneal opacities. When you have many tears in all four quadrants, it's reasonable. When you have giant retinal tear, when we said, when you have acute retinal necrosis, when you, can, when you want to combine it with your scleral buckle and when you want to create a second aura serrata. But you have to realize that there are complications with the 360 laser as well. There's a failure to prevent the detachment because tears can occur posteriorly to your uh, laser or tears can still occur in, 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 a, in a normal retina. You can get a retinal membranes. Uh, rarely you can get transient iris sphincter palsy or affect accommodation. And if it, there's a lot of laser you do, you can still get visual field defect. So in conclusion, what, uh, what, uh, what, when do we do prophylactic laser? The two cases that we need to do prophylactic laser is when you have symptomatic tears with vitreous obstruction and when you have the fellow eye with the giant retina tear. All the, all the others are debatable. The doctor must stay up to date according to the literature about what the literature says because those things change constantly. And the doctor has also to inform very well the patient, not only for the for but for the cons of the laser because it exists. Such, th uh, such things, and also it has to use common sense. We don't laser everything we see in our office when examining a rat, okay? And we should keep what, uh, what Hippocrates says. We sh first, we should uh, do good to our, to our patient, and second, we should not do harm. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, uh, Blasi. Uh, do you, how do you advise a pregnant woman that she's going to deliver soon, uh, and she's a myop according to her lesions? It depends. If, it, if it's just myopia with, without any lesion, she, hasn't, she, she doesn't do anything. If I find any lesion like a tear or hole, I laser it. So, okay. like, like a normal Like person. a normal person, yeah. I'll, I'll, oh, well, no, cesarean. No. She's if, going if to deliver laser, normally okay. and yes, not C-section. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, no, yes. About lasering fellow eyes of GRT retinal detachments because there is a, a systematic review on that and it, the, the conclusion is basically the, the whole thing is very inconclusive. Right. So uh, maybe doing laser in cases where there is no PVD can basically can create uh, um, an, an area where when the PVD develops you can get a giant retinal tear at the edge of the laser. So basically, that's the main reason that, for instance, at Moorfields, nobody would laser a, a fellow eye of a GRT retinal detachment. I don't know what you do the if, same, if, you, if you do laser. No, no, I did that, and the same happened to me. I had a giant retinal tear. I, I did the first surgery, went fine. So I said, since they do laser, let's laser the other eye. I, I lasered the other eye. Two weeks later, had a detachment, not with a giant retinal tear, with a big tear, but not giant retinal tear. So I don't do it anymore because uh, what, one more. I don't feel safe. Yeah. Yes. Microphone. The giant air detachment. Yes, but, but he got a detachment. Nevertheless, he had a detachment, so he has to be too far detachment, yes. And so. taking further to what Petra said, Louisa Wickham's paper with Bill Elward on prophylaxis, to do prophylactic laser in general retinal tears, 
said it's impossible to know because you need to recruit more than 600 huge, patients. Huge amount of patients, in a, yeah. And so it is practically impossible so, to find yeah, that. Yeah, so it, it's just something that you have to decide yourself, really. We thank you. Uh,